and refuse. What was that? Luca Brazzi held a gun to his head, and my father assured him that either his brains or his signature would be on the contract. It's Sunday morning on CBS, and here again is Jane Pauley. That's Al Pacino as Michael Corleone and The Godfather. Over his 50 years on stage and screen, Pacino's played so many singular characters, it's hard to pick a favorite. With Ben Mankiewicz, he talks about the one character many of us don't really know much about, Al Pacino. On a bright day overlooking Beverly Hills, Al Pacino recalls a warning from years ago. What did your therapist tell you about, about coming out here to L.A.? He said, don't go to L.A. Al. But here he is. And even now, at 84, he's still adjusting to that Hollywood life. You have to learn how things are. You think you have now? If you want now, I'm, I'm trying. What do you want from me? I actually put a tie on. You put a tie on? See you? <laughs> That's what famous guys do. He's more than famous. Say hello to my dear friend! He's Al Pacino. It's not personal, son. It's strictly business. Nine Oscar nominations. Man, you are out of order! You are out of order! You are out of order! Seven straight. I want this no first step, and I want Trish at that. Without a win. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Until sent of a woman. Hoo-ha! You broke my streak. Hmm. Plus two Emmys, two Tonys, a Kennedy Center Honor, and a Lifetime Achievement Award from the AFI. He's been a leading man in the movies and a character actor for nearly 55 years. I'm an old fella, you know? And when I have my hair now and I go out and someone takes a picture of me, all you see is like a white hydrant. You know, fire hydrant. I, I just say, I don't feel I'm gray yet. I don't want to be gray. I'm that, that guy in the, in the book cover. The guy on the book cover is finally telling his own story. It's in his new memoir, Sunny Boy. That's what his mom called him. What's your mother's name? Rose. They lived with his grandparents in a three-room walk-up in the South Bronx. Rose kept her Sunny Boy in when his friends tempted him with the streets. So they're calling up like, Sonny, come down. Come down, and she said, no, no. I, I was so upset, so angry at her. I think she was part of what saved my life, kept me off drugs. I couldn't go out, I went to school. If his mother saved his life, another woman changed it. And this Blanche Rothstein, who was my eighth grade teacher, actually came to my apartment and she sat down and talked to my grandmother. What she said, I don't know, but I think it finally came down that you should encourage this boy to do what he's doing, the acting. You have to, he is made to do this. Good reviews came early. At 13, after a school show, a stranger came up to him and said, you're the next Marlon Brando. His response? Who's Marlon Brando? <laughs> At 16, Pacino dropped out of school to immerse himself in the New York theater scene. To survive, he took any job. Messenger, janitor, switchboard operator, twice an usher, twice fired. Well, I was in this Carnegie Hall place. This Carnegie Hall place? It's Carnegie Hall. It's Carnegie Hall. I was, you know, I had this tuxedo on, and they liked you know, I was relatively good looking. So there were these people coming in. And I was supposed to seat them. Okay, it's the, job, just, it's the job of an usher. Actually. It is the job of an usher. Okay. Finally, <laughs> yeah. But I didn't last doing that. I, I just didn't have the heart. So I said, sit anywhere you want. <laughs> I said, I mean, you, you got a better seat if you're up further than when you're down. And then there was a fist fight, and I'm right, right. <laughs> And uh, on the spot, I was gone. The winner is Al Pacino. Thankfully, Pacino had the stage where he made a name for himself and got the attention of a young director, Francis Ford Coppola, who saw him as Michael Corleone in The Godfather. Francis wanted you, but, uh... Oh, nobody else did, though. No. He got his part, but studio execs pushed to fire him. 
We watched a scene that Pacino thought even hoped would be his last on the film. You run out of the restaurant. You jump into the car. I missed the car. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. ankle's busted. And you think, what? Thank you, God. You thought I'm going to get out of this film. That's right. Al Pacino was relieved. He thought he was so badly injured he could get out of The Godfather. Thankfully, his ankle healed and the kid stayed in the picture. And they would take little iron energy, see, put it into straight police work. We got the city cleaned up in a week. A string of hits followed, including Serpico and Dog Day Afternoon. Robbing the bank's a federal offense. They got me on kidnapping, armed robbery. They're going to bury me, man. Where Ad Lib became a classic cinematic moment. How about this great AD, assistant director, comes running up to me as I'm about to go out and says, Say Attica. I said, what? He said, Say Attica. Attica! And the crowd just went into spasm, and they all, they, they knew it. They were right there, you know, in it. All the attention, all the success didn't sit well with Pacino. He coped by drinking. Alcohol is a depressant. Yeah. Like, literally, it brings you down. And how'd your life change when you stopped? Well, we got a little worse for a while. It really is yeah. terrible. But then eventually, thank God, they got there. In his memoir, he's candid about his struggles with alcoholism. And he also reveals that he nearly died from COVID. But one thing I'm sure will catch people off guard is how close we all came to losing you over COVID. Yeah. Out of this world. I mean, I was here and then I wasn't. The nurse said my pulse stopped. Now, I don't think my pulse stopped. But it doesn't really matter whether technically you were close to death or not. You felt it. And I you had every I really did. It was so real. And uh, I didn't see any light. I didn't see anything at all. There's a speech in Hamlet where he says to be or not to be. You know? And then where he talks about leaving the earth when you die. And he says, no more. No more. How about that? <laughs> These days, there's plenty more for Al Pacino. He's as busy as ever. I like sitting on the couch, <laughs> but I keep working. I've got six films, smaller roles, of course, and they haven't come out yet. And despite that advice from his therapist, he's living in L.A. Can we say it? Are you as Al Pacino an L.A. guy now? No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you I, are. I know. <laughs> yeah. I still speak English. <laughs> And L.A. may speak Hollywood. <laughs> Truth is, this is where they make movies. A fitting place for a guy who remains what he's always been. An actor still experiencing the same buzz he felt 60 years ago on an off-Broadway stage in New York. I said, I'm never going to do anything else but this. I have found it. I, I don't care what happens to me. Whether I succeed, not succeed, didn't matter. I had this. Yeah, you write that, like, maybe I'll be able to eat, or I won't eat. Maybe I'll have money, or I won't have money. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I'll become famous, or maybe I won't. Doesn't matter. Didn't matter. Because that's the freedom. This was where I belonged. See you tomorrow. We love you. We'll see you here on The Family Field. Show until next time. This is Peter Tamarkin on behalf of the Focati Rug saying thanks for pressing your luck. Bye-bye. Anyway, we have just 10 seconds to say goodbye. We'll see you uh, tomorrow. So long. Bye-bye. Yeah. We got we five seconds. Oh, no. We have three. Two, one. Bye. Bye.